Hello and welcome to this first video in a video series around postural management. My name's Richard and I'm the Clinical Training Manager for Giraffe and for Jenks. So first of all, let's just take a look at the video series itself, um, and what it's going to include, who it's really for, and uh, what we hope you, to, hope you uh, get out of the series. So really, this is an introduction to postural management, and it's aimed at um, anybody that's involved in the care of somebody with disabilities. So that might be a healthcare professional, a physiotherapist, an occupational therapist, um, a nurse. Um, but it's also relevant for carers and families of those um, who've got disabilities as well. So no matter kind of where your knowledge is, um, whether it's the kind of first time you've heard of postural management or if you've already got quite a, a strong knowledge around that subject, um, there should be something in this series for you. We're going to take a look into the importance of 24-hour postural management as well and why that has to happen over a complete day, um, seven days a week. Um, we're going to take a look at what actually impacts our posture, okay, and the, the risks associated with that and secondary complications, especially for, for those with complex disabilities. Then we're going to take a look at how to build a stable posture in seating, in standing and in lying. We'll take a look at the fundamentals of um, assessing for posture. So I hope that um, you gain quite a lot of useful hint, hints and tips and some, uh, some techniques around how to actually assess someone's posture. Um, and then we're gonna take a look at choosing the correct piece of equipment for the specific user as well. So there's a lot of um, equipment out there, so it's really important that we find the right piece for, for that individual. So without further ado, um, today's video is an introduction to postural management um, and what we hope you'll gain from this is basically a, an understanding of what postural management is. Um, we're also going to look at how, we, um, how, how to achieve um, a good position in sitting, standing and lying and what are the factors around that and what we need to consider. We're also going to take a look at the kind of the negative side of what happens if we don't manage someone's posture as well. And then we're going to look a little bit more specifically around why that has to happen over a 24 hour period. Okie dokie. So when we think of posture, um, the first thing that we all do is kind of sit up straight in our chairs and try to be kind of as aligned as possible because someone said the word posture and now, now we have to have good posture. Um, so th there's a couple of different um, ways of thinking about it. Um, on your screen now, you've got a couple of quotes from, from different uh, practitioners. Uh, really, to put it into a nutshell, posture is how the body fights against gravity to kind of remain aligned and in a position. Um, you can see there the second quote from Pauline Pope um, goes into a little bit more detail and looking at how the body kind of conforms to the supporting surface, how we offload our kind of body onto different, um, in, into different segments, uh, and also the how forces can impact our body internally and externally. So now that we've got kind of a, a brief idea of what posture is, that it's just us fighting against gravity to stay in a seated position or a lying position or a standing position, um, what's postural management? So it can be summed up as the approach of managing someone's posture, movement and function um, for those people that can't do it for themselves. And that has to be done over a 24 hour period, seven days a week. Uh, we'll go into a little bit more detail of, of why that has to happen constantly um, a little bit later on in this presentation. So who is it that needs postural management? Um, so myself and, and probably you, that if you're watching this video, you may be able to adjust your own position. So if we become uncomfortable, um, if we're either lying in bed and we kind of get a numb shoulder, we can just roll over and that disperses some of the pressure onto different body segments. Um, people with complex disabilities aren't always able to do that. So there's a lot of risks associated with that. So people that aren't able to adjust their own position are quite at risk um, of, a lot of secondary complications, which we'll again go into further details a bit later on. Um, so people also that have quite asymmetric positions, so perhaps um, they've got some deformities in their skeleton, um, which create more bonious points, um, which in turn creates more kind of pressure going through those bony points. Um, and this can have knock on effects around kind of skin integrity issues. They may have thermoregulation issues and also communication is issues, so they're not able to actually advise when they're uncomfortable or in, uh, um, in um, a lot of pain in a certain position. 
Another group of people that we need to manage the posture of are um, children and adults with abnormal tone. So um, someone perhaps with um, spastic cerebral palsy um, that, that goes into hyperextension that um, can bring them out of alignment and they need to be kind of managed back into a nice neutral position. One thing to note at this point is that uh, we do need to be careful when we are thinking about posture um, around anything that might impede someone's independence or function. So it would be you know, fantastic if we could give everyone, for example, a sleep system. Um, but if that sleep system's going to take away their ability to roll themselves, if they've kind of have a, a routine where, where they do that, then we need to think about that and make sure that the interventions that we're putting into place don't stop someone becoming um, from being independent. So really when we think of postural management, um, we think of um, helping people to have multiple positions. So this is usually within a sitting, a lying, or a standing position, but there's many therapeutic um, positions that we can have within a robust uh, postural management plan, high kneeling, for example, to kind of stretch out hamstrings, etc. Um, we also need to be aware that we want to offer as much active movement as possible. So especially with um, uh, young children that are still developing muscles and developing motor skills, we want to encourage that active movement. And also by having these um, multiple positions, we're able to also offer more functionality and more independence. For example, in a seating, in a, in a seated position, uh, it might be easier for that person to kind of communicate with their peers. So uh, we need to take all of that into consideration when we're creating a, a robust uh, postural management plan. So in terms of postural ma management, there are kind of three main aims to postural management. Uh, there are a multitude of benefits, which we can also go into a little bit later, but they can all be encapsulated into kind of three different areas. So the first one is around function. So that again, we've spoke about this already, about allowing that child or adult to be as independent as possible. So again, we'll go into what that can include a little bit later on. We're also looking to minimise damage. So there's a lot of risks of um, musculoskeletal damage or internal organs being harmed if we're in a very poor posture. And the third one is uh, around uh, reducing energy expenditure. So especially in paediatrics, it might sound a little bit um, counterintuitive, uh, intuitive, um, but if I kind of pose a situation of maybe a child that struggles to keep themselves up in a chair and spends the day uh, using a lot of energy just to kind of keep themselves up in a good position in the chair um, because they've spent all of that energy throughout the day just trying to find a functional position they're not able to engage in kind of classroom activities or any uh, therapeutic program so really it's about conserving that energy um, and being able to be more functional um, in the in the time that you actually need to be more functional so when we talk about function, what, what kind of things are we thinking of? Um, so firstly, um, all of our bodily systems, so breathing, um, digestion, um, eating, for example. So all of our kind of activities of daily living. Communication is, is a really big one. A lot, a lot of the, um, the people that we help um, um, are nonverbal. So they rely a lot on eyesight for their communication skills. If, for example, that person is not in a, a very good posture, if po possibly they might be a little bit slumped forward and a bit kyphotic at the top of the spine, um, perhaps they don't have very good head control, so they can't keep their, their head up. Um, so if that's the kind of position that that person is adopting throughout the day, um, it means that a lot of their time is spent looking at the knees uh, and not being able to maintain eye contact. So it really will remove that person from the world and we're really looking to um, offer as much engagement, independence and, and happiness as possible. And obviously play as well, especially for kind of our, uh, um, our young, young people that we look after. Uh, there's a lot of development that can happen within play around motor skills, communication skills, social skills. So it's a really important part of... Uh, um, a child's day. 
So when we think of minimising damage as the kind of section of postural management, this can include a lot of different things. So we might be looking to prevent or minimise any deformities happening within the skeleton, um, also with any soft tissues um, adapting over time. Um, also, if we adopt very poor postures, it can cause uh, compression of the internal organs. So, for example, if we're quite slumped forward, um, it has an impact on our rib cage, and we're not able to breathe as well. Um, formation of contractures is quite um, a prevalent one that we see a lot. You've probably heard of the term a person becoming chair shaped, and that's really when um, someone's adopted a seated position for the majority of the day for a long period of time and all those um, soft tissues, tendons and ligaments have all fixed themselves um, at a kind of 90, 90 degree angle. So we've lost a lot of range of, uh, range of range of motion there, which can happen. So it's another reason why having a robust postural management um, program in, in, that includes a lot of different positions helps to really prevent those, uh, those contractures from happening. So that really also includes kind of shortening and over lengthening of muscles and tendons again in that situation um, where someone's been in a seated position for too long and they've um, their tendons have become too short and they're not able to, to gain that range of motion uh, but also what I like to think of uh, in this instance is maybe a wind sweeping position which you may have heard before and that's where if someone is lying down with um, both legs folded over to one side um, the, the leg on, on top almost has got the, um, the muscles and the tendons on the outer side of the, the leg have become too long um, um, and the ones on the inside of the leg have become too short and then the exact opposite on the kind of bottom leg. So what happens there is if that, ha if that has been um, over a long period of time, those muscles and tendons may have actually fixed in that position which then means you're not able to come into a nice neutral position. So really, um, if that happens, it's gonna be much more difficult to find a comfortable uh, and pain-free uh, seated position. And really what that's to do is to do with is um, the elasticity and plasticity of our muscles. So if you think of perhaps a, a piece of blue tack maybe, um, if you pull that blue tack apart, um, and then you kind of release at a certain point, it will regain its shape just naturally. If you overstretch it and it goes past the point of uh, kind of no return almost, um, and it isn't able to regain its uh, original shape, that's kind of an, uh, the idea of plasticity. So if that happens to me or you, maybe we've had a sports injury and uh, we kind of overstretched a tendon, um, it will take time, but we'll, we'll be able to heal and um, hopefully regain that range of uh, motion. The, the, kind of, the studies around, around this with people with neurological conditions uh, suggests that um, they're not able to regain and uh, retrieve that muscle plasticity. So once it's um, unfortunately gone past that point of no return, um, they're not able to regain it. So it's quite an important thing to think of from an early intervention point of view um, that we're really looking to kind of stop that from happening or minimise the chance of that happening. Now we've already kind of spoke about a few scenarios around um, reducing effort and energy output. Um, we spoke about uh, having to have uh, enough energy to be functional and if all of our day is just spent um, exerting our energy, just maintaining a neutral posture, then it's, it's, it's not efficient and it also it's gonna limit how independent we can be. So if you take, for example, um, somebody that can self-transfer themselves onto a toilet. Again, if they've used all that energy up just sitting, um, they're gonna, they might lose that ability to, to do that transfer. Um, the other thing to think of in, uh, in this respect as well is also that idea of management over treatment. So um, if, we, if we manage someone's posture um, effectively and from a very early age, the, the likelihood of them having to have any kind of operation um, or surgery to, to correct anything is, is lower. Um, but if they, uh, if they still need to have maybe a ham length um, ha sorry, hamstring length, <laughs> a hamstring lengthening surgery, sorry, um, then we need to think of how that's going to be managed before and after that surgery, because the treatment won't be as successful if we don't manage the positions. I hope that made, made sense. Um, so 
<clears throat> in terms of what is beneficial for a, from a postural management point of view, um, all of our internal systems, uh, organs, they'll benefit greatly. So we've already spoke about the kind of um, respiratory side of things. So being able to open that um, chest cavity up and allow the, the lungs to function as best as possible. Again, if we're in that um, hunched over position, that really puts a lot of pressure on our kind of digestive system and our bowels and our bladder. And the likelihood of becoming kind of constipated or impacted is um, increased as well. And how that then affects everything else it has quite a, a knock-on effect and just terms of mood also general health that sort of thing um, being also in different positions in a standing position our heart has to work a bit differently and a bit harder to get blood all around of our um, our body so it's it's good for the cardiovascular system and in terms of um, skeletal health as well if we think of perhaps the um, the, the hip joints of, of, of children before before the the acetabulum uh, which is your kind of your hip socket is formed it's actually quite flat so it's the process of being in an upright position and loading um uh loading over that pelvis which actually creates the the that natural acetabulum groove that we have as kind of adults um so if that isn't happening at a young age if, if we're not in a standing position if we're not bearing weight through our pelvis and our hips then that it's going to be more likely that that um uh sorry that acetabulum isn't going to form as well so the evidence does suggest that as soon as we can get children standing um it, it leads to better outcomes so there was some examples of um kind of the physical um side of things and how it actually um benefits our kind of internal organs and our um, bodily systems but in terms of kind of the social um, psychological well-being we've already spoke about communication how important that is and being able to have eye contact and be engaged within a room engagement is a is a a, a massive uh, massive one especially for kind of children in their development if we're not able to be on kind of the same peer height we're not able to interact with our peers we're not um we're not able to um progress as quickly or be involved with classroom activities it kind of segments it, or it can segment you away from that um happiness in general and being happy and being included um being in different positions getting a different um perspective on the world as well is um is has shown great results in terms of having that kind of spatial awareness and body awareness. So adopting different positions like a standing position um, is going to help with things like that. And you might be thinking, why are meerkats there? Um, we don't turn into meerkats, unfortunately. Um, I, that was to show alertness. So um, being more alert, being more um, aware of our surroundings. So when, especially when we were talking about that reducing energy, it's allowing us to have that kind of energy to be more alert and to get involved and to, uh, to be more engaged in um, the activities and the functions that we want to do in the day. Just a few other things to kind of point out around the benefits um, and what we're really looking to achieve. One of the main things is obviously as living as pain-free uh, as possible and reducing any discomfort. So um, there's a load of gold standards around postural management of what we look to achieve, um, which is great, and we should always aim to to kind of achieve those gold standards. However, there does need to be an aspect of comfort involved with that as well, because um, if you're kind of being made to sit in a position that isn't too comfortable for you, then in terms of how long you want to tolerate that, it's, it's going to affect things like that. So um, it's just one thing to be aware of that, Although we want to do our best and look for our optimal points of, um, or kind of our optimal joint ranges, that in certain circumstances we need to take other things into consideration as well. We've already mentioned things around early interventions um, and better outcomes. I mentioned before about the, the there's quite a few standing studies um, that suggests standing children from around the age of twelve months um, we uh, will hopefully bring better outcomes um, adopting more happy and healthier life feeling more engaged we've already kind of mentioned that in the last slide um, being more functional and independent we want to promote that as much as possible for our um, young people and adults and also just another thing to consider would be um, the cost um, to um, here in the UK the NHS and medical providers around the globe 
um, it's not something that I tend to focus on on much, to be honest. But um, if we think of things like hip corrective surgeries that has to happen in the UK, um, that does cost the NHS millions. Whereas a robust postural management plan from a, from a young age would cost significantly less than that. So now let's take a look at what impacts our posture. Um, so the main thing that impacts our posture, both internally and externally, is um, forces. So in case you need a little bit of a, a reminder, um, if you haven't done physics since GCSE, like myself, um, you, a, a force is basically something that has magnitude, or a size, it has a direction and a point of application. And what a force does is simply it moves something, or it stops something from moving, uh, and it can also change something's shape. So if we think about that in con context of our bodies, that's happening constantly in, inside of us and in the kind of internal side of things, but also um, we've already spoke about things that are happening externally to us as well. So um, one of which is, is gravity. So we've spoke about posture being um, basically ourselves trying to keep aligned against the constant struggle of uh, gravity. Uh, and this, this slide here just depicts the, the human sandwich uh, of basically gravity trying to compress us into the support, supporting surface. So not only do we have gravity on the outside um, affecting our posture, but there's a lot of things going on internally. So um, one of the forces that we're subject to is um, compression and, um, and tensile forces. So um, one example of this would be perhaps your bicep muscle. So when we kind of go into extension and, um, and flexion, that's the bicep muscle um, compressing and also um, stretching out into, into tension. Um, another couple of things to, to bear in mind, especially when we think of posture and, and seating, uh, one would be shear forces. So that's basically where, um, if we think of a seating situation, where the person sat on the supporting surface um, and their, their skin is kind of moving forward, their, their body weight is pushing them forward, but the supporting surface is causing the, the skin um, closest to it to stay where it is. So there's a lot of skin integrity issues and um, tears and kind of pressure that can build up over time through those shear forces. Another one that's quite similar to, to shear force is also friction, so, so that's happening um, all of the time. Um, it's where two surfaces are rubbing together, so you can kind of think of that um, if a person's in a piece of equipment and maybe their clothing is, is rubbing against their skin, it can cause abrasions, that sort of thing. So buckling, um, you've got the, the picture here of a 30 centimetre ruler, so I think that's a really good um, depiction of buckling because you can pop um, quite a bit of pressure through, through, the, uh, through the ruler and it takes quite a while before it to actually start bending, you can apply quite a bit of force um, but once that kind of bends happened in the in the ruler, it's actually really quite easy to uh, to bend the the ruler for, um, bend the ruler more. So I like to think of that as the human spine, really. So if by pressing kind of uh, sorry applying pressure uh, to the to the top of the head through gravity, over time if 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 that's not managed, the the spine can become curved. Um, so you're kind of in a, a kyphotic po uh, posture. Now what's happened once that has kind of started, the head becomes a little bit further away from the body and therefore the forces that are going through the head becomes um, more powerful. Um, so it's actually easier for that curve to get worse. So if we don't manage someone's posture um, and they have a bit of a kyphosis, um, it's likely that that could, could get worse through buckling. Then we have rotation. So again, that's happening throughout the body. Uh, we like to twist and turn to see our environment. Um, again, that's the, you, you can imagine the spine doing that and all the vertebrae. Um, now, that's, that's not a problem. We need to be able to do that to, to engage with our surroundings. However, if we're constantly in that rotated state, um, time under tension can cause quite a lot of issues. So those are things just to think of when we think internally of the body, of what's going on, um, and how that kind of impacts someone that can't change their position. So when we look at the, the human body itself, um, some of the kind of key notable things are that the, the body's naturally unstable and it's very flexible. So we aren't kind of conducive to having a stable posture. We're quite long, we're quite tall. We don't particularly have a, a wide base of support. So um, luckily for, for most of us, we've got a lot of internal stabilizing mechanisms that help us to, to balance like our vestibular um, system and our inner ear. Um, a lot of people with complex disabilities and neurodisabilities 
um, they don't necessarily have these these bodily functions or they might be impaired. So um, that's where external supports might come into play a bit more because they're not able to keep their balance and they there's a lot more slumping and a lot of more um, um, unstable postures to consider. We're also quite vulnerable to damage as well. There's a lot of soft tissues. Um, we can kind of break our bones quite easily. Um, and all of that kind of internal compression that we've spoke about earlier on as well. Um, we're quite susceptible to those those things happening. Um, for, for us day to day, we can kind of come across um, sports injuries and things like that. But um, it, if we think of um, a person that can't manage their own posture, if, they, if they're not able to adjust their position, we have to think of things like um, pressure pressure issues. So the, the skeleton kind of piercing the, the skin through an internal um, function of, of gravity, applying pressure to the skeleton and not being able to shift that body weight from side to side may, um, may allow kind of pressure to build up in certain areas. We've also spoke about um, soft tissues adapting over time. So we mentioned the idea of becoming chair shaped. So if I adopted a seated position for a very long period of time, um, if I'm kind of in this seated position for, for years almost, um, over that time, soft tissues uh, do kind of adapt to that shape. So I like to think of it as in kind of silly putty. So if you, if you put silly putty over an object, over time that silly putty would um, develop that shape and then kind of envelop that, that object. The same thing, thing happens with our bodies. Um, so it's one of the, the key reasons why we have to adjust our posture. So as just a bit of a recap of the things that could happen f um, if we didn't manage someone's posture that needed to be managed. Um, we've spoke about the formation of contractures already. Um, we've got the, um, the possibility of um, deformation of the skeleton. So if we adopt a poor position for a long enough period of time, the, um, we can adopt that shape and we can our bones will become fused into that shape. So if we think of a uh, fixed kyphosis where we're, we've got that kind of hunch in the top part of the spine. We spoke about the compression of internal organs and the knock-on effect to that and the secondary complications that can occur from that. Um, it's going to be harder to for your bodies to work and to function. Um, but also, if for example, if we take the idea of um, a peg site and being fed um, through through that peg site, if we're not in a conducive posture for that, it's going to be harder for your body to absorb that nutri uh, those nutrients, and it's going to be harder for um, the body to accept uh, accept those nutrients as well. We briefly spoke about uh, pressure related injuries, so pressure sores, and um, if we basically stay in the same posture for a long period of time, we've got different bony points in our body. Um, so if, for example, we were in a supine position, if we were laid down on our back, um, um, one of the bony points is at the back of our heads, and what, what a pressure related injury is really the way that I like to think of it or I don't like to think of it but the way that my brain works is it's basically the skeleton trying to leave the body so the gravity is creating a, um, enough pressure for the for our skeleton to actually start to pierce the internal soft tissues of our body and through kind of the different layers of skin um, especially with those bonus points that we've got like on the back of our head, our, on our heels, the sacral bones of our pelvis, things like that. Um, and we're gonna st you could start to see um, pressure related injuries from, from um, lack of um, different po uh, adopting different postures. So, and then we also have the um, issues around osteoporosis and osteopenia, um, where the brain bones become too brittle because we're not uh, weight bearing through them as well. So, um, obviously that can happen for, for anyone and it's more prevalent in the kind of older adult community. And then all of these, these things can lead to certain infections as well. Um, and if the body isn't functioning as well, it's not gonna be able to fight off those infections as, as well as it could. So this next slide here, um, we have uh, a gentleman um, that's clearly not had a great deal of postural management in his life. Um, and I like to show this slide in a lot of my presentations just because it really um, kind, kind of depicts what possibly could happen. Um, obviously, I've, I've never met this gentleman. I don't know um, 
what his diagnosis is or um, if any of his uh, issues are fixed or flexible but I think it's safe to kind of assume some things so for example if we take a look at his his ankles and his feet they're in quite a plantar flex position which means that your toes are kind of pointing towards the ground um, it's quite likely that that might be a fixed position so it's not able to get that 90 degrees at the ankle and what that might mean is um, it's going to be very difficult for this gentleman to be in a standing position because all of the, the pressure and all of his weight will be going through his toes. Um, and also it's not going to create a very stable base uh, if you're just balancing on your toes, for example. Also, though, in a seated position, um, again, we like to sit with our um, feet at plantar grade or 90 degrees. Um, it's also going to be very difficult for him to sit comfortably from his kind of his feet point of view. And if you work up his kind of lower limbs, we can then see that his knees are quite flexed. Um, again, we don't know if this is fixed or if it's flexible, but if it is fixed, it looks at quite kind of a 45 degree angle, um, which is going to be very difficult again to seat this gentleman as his, his legs are going to go basically going to be uh, behind his uh, behind his bottom um, if he was in a seated position. And then you can see that again, his hips look quite flexed as well. So it's the same kind of issues there. His his chest, and if you look at his chest in comparison to his pelvis, there appears to be quite a lot of rotation happening in that spine. Um, and it's, it's quite likely that there's gonna be some issues around um, kind of rib flares and things like that, which is where one of the ribs might be protruding a little bit, which is, it's not gonna be comfortable, especially if you're lying on that protrusion or, uh, and also it might impact his, his breathing. Um, the other thing to note with this gentleman is um, what I was mentioning before around that wind sweeping issue. So you can see that both of his legs are over to one side. And again, it's likely that those soft tissues and tendons have all kind of been overstretched on one side and shortened on the other. So when we are wanting to get into a, a seated position, which we'll go through on another, another um, video, we like to sit in a little bit of abduction to create a stable base. That's not going to be very easy to create with a, this wind, windswept position. So really, it's it's this slide is just to kind of highlight certain things that could happen. Um, obviously, I think this gentleman probably was born a little bit before the, um, the concept of postural management happened. But now that we know what we know, um, it's likely that we can implement things and uh, help people in the same situation not um, have the same outcome. And finally, I just want to talk about why it has to happen over 24 hours. Um, I think probably from what we've gone through in today's video, it's it's quite apparent why. The fir first of all, um, gravity is constant. It doesn't take a break. Um, so we're, we're not able to um, take a, a break from gravity. So it's constantly bearing down on us. Um, so we need to manage our positions um, constantly. Also, um, when we think of what can happen from an unmanaged posture, um, like in the slide that we've just seen, the, the, the idea of being able to lie um, in a good position so that we're able to then sit. So the way that I like to think of it is um, we need to lie well to sit well. So. If we've managed those kind of issues, any rotations, any wind sweeping from an early age um, and we're in a, in, a, in a nice aligned position when we're sleeping, that's going to allow us to be more functional <coughs> in a seated position as well. The other thing to consider is the fact that on a good day, um, we may sleep for around eight hours. Um, that's a long time to be in one position. We've got lots of different options in the day. We can go in a standing frame for an hour, we can um, have different kind of seating systems or if, uh, if possibly kind of different walking aids if possible. Um, but a big chunk of that, those 24 hours is in bed in an aligned position. So it's one of the key um, things that we need to think of when creating a robust postural management plan because standing in a standing frame for an hour at, in, in the day is great and has got a lot of therapeutic benefits, um, but a lot of that good work can be kind of undone in the other 23 hours if we don't, if, we, if we're not um, kind of on top of it. Also to obviously meet those three aims of postural management, which um, 
which is also very important. So <coughs> the th uh, when we talk of function, being in those different positions is going to allow us to be more functional and more independent for different tasks. It's also going to help us to reduce um, all of that fatigue as well, so that we're able to be more functional and obviously to minimise um, though that damage to the body that can happen through un, uh, unmanaged uh, postures. Also soft tissue adaptation, I gave you an example before about that kind of silly putty and our, um, our lower half becoming that silly putty if we just stay in one position for too long. Um, the pressure, pressure areas, again we've, we've kind of spoke about that and why that's so important. And also um, all the kind of psychosocial benefits as well of being included and having a different perspective on the world. Um, standing up, it gives you a complete different view of a room um, than sitting down. So um, it, it's important to have, have those different perspectives and gain that spatial awareness of how our bodies interact with, uh, with the environment. So if we summarize today's key learnings and what we really hope you take away from this, uh, this video, um, first of all, posture. So what is posture? Constant struggle against gravity. So it's our bodies trying to stay aligned against gravity in the most kind of simplest way of thinking of things. What's postural management? It's the man management of someone's posture who can't um, do it for themselves. And that's over a 24 hour period. What are the three main aims of postural management? So function or independence, allowing someone to do as much for themselves as possible. Number two is minimize damage. So stopping those skeletal or muscular um, damages or internal organs that um, get damaged from poor posture. And uh, number three is to reduce effort or fatigue. So to allow us to be more functional, we need to conserve um, energy throughout the day. Um, we've spoke already about the benefits of um, postural, management's, postural management over a 24 hour period. And we've also spoke about the negative outcomes of, uh, of what can happen to a person if we don't intervene. Okay. So I hope that that was useful and wherever your kind of knowledge has been that you will have hopefully gained something from there. Um, the, the next video is that's going to be on the anatomy and biomechanics. Um, so we're going to take a look at some of those issues that we've mentioned today around any kind of asymmetries of the skeleton, uh, any kind of muscular issues and basically how the body moves and how it segments itself. So that will be the next video. So I hope that will come out for you guys very soon. Um, so yes, thank you very much for your time. I hope you found this useful and I look forward to doing the next one. Thank you.